Please pray with me. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Let these words, our meditations, and our actions proclaim your word on this day. Amen. How many have ever watched the television series Glee? Let me see your hands high in the air. Come on, Gleers, fess up. How many have not? Well, it's right. What's Glee? Well, have you ever heard the word glee? Does it conjure up anything? Glee clubs in high school, right? Sort of. Glee is, about, is, the, is the series about misfit teens, cast out by the peer pressure of high school, finding joy and sanctuary in the after school glee club. The Spanish teacher, Mr. Schuster, a former alumni of the same McKinley High and a former member of the Glee Club takes over. He takes over from a teacher who's actually been accused of abusing young boys. And the series follows the kids' singing careers as they move from a fledgling group of singers to national champions. In how many years? Three seasons? Those who watch, it was three seasons, I think so. Every Thursday night for three years. Isn't that funny? Thursday night. Choir night in Canada. I watched Glee and laughed and cried. The stories of high school bullies and music hit really close to home. Now the villain, Sue Sylvester. The six-time national cheerleading champion spent most of her time finding every way possible to shut down the Glee Club. She was despicable. She wasn't even particularly kind to her cheerleaders, three of whom found their way into the Glee Club. She spied on them. She extorted information out of them. She <coughs> threatened them. And these were her ways of operating. Turns out she was a real bully. <coughs> On the Christmas special, in season two, she dressed up as the Grinch. Sue Sylvester dressed up as the Grinch and actually stole Christmas. You see, the Glee Clubbers had got a bunch of Christmas gifts for the poor kids that year, and they were under a beautiful Christmas tree. She stole them all. She broke every Christmas decoration, and she clipped with a, an electric um, uh, hedge trimmer all of the branches off the Christmas tree. How many remember that? Come on, Gleers. Yes, right? Except that she wasn't a bully. At least not in the eyes of her sister, Jean. Her older sister who had Down syndrome. To Jean, Sue was a courageous hero, courageous hero and her best friend. And throughout those first three seasons, we would get glimpses of Jean and Sue together. And Sue's tender core would be revealed. And we were all shocked. Not possible. Jean died in those first three years. And at her funeral, Sue is as close to human vulnerability and brokenness as anyone could be. And then, all of a sudden, the TV audience saw Sue from a completely different perspective, changing how we viewed her consistently despicable behavior from thereafter. The audience eventually finds out why Sue is as horrible as she is in subsequent end, uh, episodes. Turns out, she had to grow up quickly and sort out her priorities and values because the real villain was her mother, Doris, played by none other than Carol Burnett. <laughs> Doris cut out on Jean and Sue very early in their lives, and they had to fend for themselves. 
Now, I'm not about to break out singing all my favorite Glee hit songs. <laughs> but Sue Sylvester is a modern-day Zacchaeus. I wonder if we actually know anyone in our lives like her. What do we know about Zacchaeus? What do we know about him? Excellent. He's the chief tax collector. What? Despised him. People did not like him, they despised him. What else do we know about him? He was curious. He was curious? He was small. He was short. He was rich. Chief tax collectors, what they got, they got a contract from Rome. And they were, the contract was, you get this money and you send it to Rome. Well, <laughs> that was the minimum they needed to send. That was not the maximum that they collected. They kept the difference. By the people uh, reaction, he wasn't liked at all. What else do we know about that story? He's not only just curious, Helen, he's as excited to see Jesus as the rest of them. Now, I don't get why he would be excited if he's as hated as he is. Why would he be as excited to see Jesus when our traditional perspective and the crowds, from that perspective, Jesus would surely admonish him, right? From our perspective of Zacchaeus. Why would Zacchaeus be excited when we think he's going to catch you know what from Jesus? His short stature makes him climb a tree. Why would a man of Zacchaeus' position, rank, power, influence, reduce himself by climbing a tree, bringing attention to himself? Why would he do that if he's as hated as he is? And then when pa Jesus passes by, Jesus, Jesus notices Zacchaeus in the tree and says, Zacchaeus, come down. I must stay at your house today. <clears throat> Why did Jesus know Zacchaeus' name? And why did Jesus say, I must stay? Stay at your house today. And, and then, when Zacchaeus hurriedly runs down the tree, he gladly welcomes him to his home. So I'm scratching my head. I don't know if you are, but I am. If Zacchaeus is all the things we think he is, and all the thing, things that the crowd thinks he is, why would he be glad to see the guy that we would expect to judge him. Anybody going like this? This isn't lining up. A sinner, from our perspective, approaches Jesus in humility and shame, not gladly, right? No? Remember the sinner last week? The same tax collector, not the same one, but a tax collector. I'm a sinner. Why is Zacchaeus showing up gladly? Well, the crowd reacts in the same way we would react when our biggest bully is treated so well. Anyone else asking the same question? From our version of the story, from our perspective of this short little bully, Zacchaeus, don't we cry, that's not fair. Yeah. But here's the thing. The, revi the new revised standard version of the story that Sherry read gives us the impression that the Zacchaeus encounter with Jesus causes a change of heart and we see a sinner turn saint, right? That's kind of the impression. Jesus repents and he's right. And he says, I will give half of my wealth away, and I, if I've cheated anymore, I love him. He beats himself. That's that, perfect. That fits our version of the story, right? But in the New International Version and the Revised Standard Version, 
the verbs used create a sense that the returning half of his wealth is part of his ongoing practice. It's happening as the story is told. This is how it reads. Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. It's like he's declaring a regular practice. Here now, I'm, I'm here. It's like it's Tuesday, I give half of my wealth to the poor. And then in response to the accusations, he says, oh, oh if I've cheated anybody, I, I'll give back four times as much as I took. Uh, as if he wasn't even aware that he might be cheating somebody. That's how the new revised, that's how the new international version reads. And remember, this is in direct response to the crowd's reaction. Have you ever been accused of something so inconsistent with your own sense of self that you become defensive and shocked? Have you ever had that experience? Where somebody accuses you of something that that's not even your self-image at all? Ever had that happen? I think that's what's going on for Zacchaeus. His own perception of himself is not at all what we think Zacchaeus is about. At least that's how the New International Version helps us to understand it. And in response, Jesus doesn't say salvation has come to this house as if it had not been there. Jesus says salvation has come to this house because of the generous practice and the new perspective offered to the people sitting in judgment. Jesus doesn't say, when you give back the money, you will be restored as an offspring of Abraham. He says, this man too is an offspring of Abraham. Look at him differently than the way you see him. It's not he will be, he is. So let's land now on the people we choose to hate. We got them. We can name them. They're right here. I can tell you three. We see them through the lens of our own experience, don't we? Think of how Jean sees Sue Sylvester. Maybe that's why Zacchaeus was happy to see Jesus and climbed a tree to get a better look. Maybe they knew each other. And maybe that's why Jesus knew Zacchaeus' name and said to a friend, Oh, I must stay at your house today. Maybe that's why Zacchaeus welcomed him. How? Gladly. How do you welcome a friend when they say, I must stay at your house? You welcome them? Gladly. Maybe. Behind every pair of eyes is a soul at work. It's useful to remember these things when in our anxiety about our future, we might make enemies out of old friends. Maybe there's another way of seeing one another that helps to welcome each other gladly and to proclaim we are all the offspring of Abraham, heirs to the promise.
May it be so. Amen. Please pray. Even the stories we've remembered from our childhood look differently when we look again. O oh, Holy One, may we remember always that behind every pair of eyes is a soul at work. May we live lives of gracious hospitality, that we might welcome the stranger and the neighbor and the dear old friend in generous love. In Jesus' name.